coming to y'all with a quick video uh, just to show you guys on the 2.4 liters, 2.2 liters, the water pump. It's getting later in the years. Uh, those things are getting older and older. Uh, so maybe you want to do it at your house and don't want a mechanic to do it. I'll show you what tools you need uh, to get the job done, stuff you can rent from AutoZone or you know whatever parts places you have in the state that you're located. All right, so these are the tools you pretty much need to do the job when the engine's out of the car. Flathead pick tool to get the O-rings out, magnet to hold the bolts when you're taking them out, the timing, extension to get to one of the bolts on the thermostat housing, 10 millimeter, 19 millimeter for the coolant temperature sensor, and then a tall and a short 13, depending on you know what kind of wrench. I got a 90 degree Milwaukee fast guy, and then a little short stubby impact. Um, and then I have my Matco wrench, you know, just to hand check everything. This is the number one thing you need to do the job, a water pump socket holder. Just want to give you an overview of how it goes together just so you can understand. Um, and if it's something you want to do at home, hey, if not, you can hit us up if you're in Arizona. Got the motor out. Currently doing the motor in this GMC terrain. There are three bolts in the thermostat housing here, uh, three 10 millimeter bolts that you'll have to remove. So if you use a 19 millimeter socket after you unplug this sensor, you can pull that out and then you remove these two bolts and this one bolt here that will give you the ability to remove this housing it might be a little stuck water outlet housing is what it's actually called sorry i might have called it a thermostat housing but it is a water outlet uh there is an o-ring that seals this tube off here and there is another o-ring that seals the pump off here so if your pump kit does not come with those o-rings i do recommend to replace them regardless if they still look okay because if that pipe is leaking you know it's a pain in the ass to pull this all back apart especially what's in the, in the car so you know a couple of bucks for two o-rings and there's also another ridged o-ring sits behind the water outlet housing right in here and you see how it's a flat um so i'll show you those and those part numbers as well so these are the gaskets here the three seals um there are more seals that come with the water pump uh, but these usually are not included so i always recommend to replace these so go ahead and get the rest of this taken apart and then we'll get these installed i snugged up two bolts just to show you guys the right way to do this put my 19 millimeter socket over here and then uh i would break this thing loose get that water temp sensor out of there now I'll take these 10 millimeter bolts back out. All right, so now that I got the three bolts out the housing and I got the sensor out, which makes it so much easier to access this bolt here, uh, we'll go ahead and pull this tube out. You can see that's where that rectangle shape goes. Um, and then there's one seal in the pipe here that seals this side off. And then here's the other seal to the water pump. All right, so we got the housing and the pipe out of the way. Now there are three 13 millimeter bolts one here one down on the bottom here there are two longer ones there's one that goes right next to the motor mount bracket here and through the timing cover there's actually one that goes right there actually one of these longer 13 millimeter before you remove those there's a plate cover which is actually sitting right there with a gasket and four 10 millimeter bolts. I remove the plate first, and then you gotta fish this up in the car. Attach these two 10 millimeters. You can see they attach into the gear. There's actually three holes, so I can position this kind of however I want it. You tighten these up, you reuse those 10 mils that came out of that plate, and you actually install them here. So you can see the timing chain. So now these three bolts hold the water pump to the timing chain. What we're gonna do here is we are going to Use this tool to hold the timing chain in place like if the water pump was still bolted to the motor. This will give us access to remove the three bolts that actually hold the water pump on, but still leave the timing in the same position. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just lock this water pump sprocket tool. Don't gotta be crazy tight. I always have a magnet. Um, if I don't have a magnetic socket, which this one, I don't have one, I always hold the magnet next to the socket. That way you don't drop the bolt down into the timing cover. Start taking it loose. Here it comes. And I just hold the magnet in there just to ensure that 
the bolt does not drop because it's kind of hard if you have bigger hands to get your fingers in there. But you see, it's just a little short 10 millimeter. Go ahead and put the magnet on the bottom side of this one. Just make sure that we don't drop it. Bam. So this one, I usually reach in from the upper side of the water sprocket here. That way, if it doesn't come out with the socket, it will come out with this. Just like that. Bam. All right, so we got all three of them. Now that we got the 10 mil out, how to go get a flathead. You pry back here. That takes off the whole water pump. You see where those three 10 millimeters went through there. Um, there is an O-ring here um, that the new water pump actually does come with. I actually got it right here. Water pump didn't come with the front side housing. Some of them do. It includes a gasket. So you just remove these couple of 10 millimeters into this top cover, which I'll show you guys real quick. I'll get the water pump back assembled. So now you can see where the water pump actually is. holds that gear in place and is part of the timing. They're all the same size, so it doesn't matter where they go back. Our little flat so. This old O-ring out of here, see it's all brittle. That's why I replace all the O-rings. Don't have no issues with leaks. This cover, um, it does have a set dial here. That actually fits in. They have a nice little ingrooved area where a tin does roll through. So it drops in like so. We just make sure that that O-ring isn't sticking out nowhere, which actually is not. Looks good to me. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and start putting our 10 mils back in. And then... You never know how tight it is. People know their guns. I know mine, but I just like to have that extra measure, especially on something like this on them but we'll get it right but yeah we got that o-ring in there we got the o-ring here so now uh we get ready to reinstall For purposes we know that this screw faces the bottom because that would be basically the drain or um basically to drain out what's left in the crossover too if you ever had a service or replace it and here we go putting the water pump back on you see right now they're a little bit off they're not totally lined up i do is the turbines in here i just kind of get my finger on there and spin it until i can get them pretty much squared away about right there all the way through in the car you might need to use a mirror i can get my fingers i have small fingers if not you might want to use a magnetic socket but get one in there numero dos and then the third one's a little hard. Um, you can use a socket. Like I said, you just have to be careful that you don't drop the bolt down into the timing cup. So I got all three of my bolts in there tightened down. So now I'm gonna start tightening up the water pump bolts. And so you guys see there's two long 13s, two short ones. The two short ones go through the back. It'll rotate just a bit, just so you can get the bolts lined up thread in and then another short bolt goes up top here and then the two longer bolts the one again goes right next to the motor mount here last one actually goes right here below where the water pump would sit he's in with my drill just snug them up until you get them all pretty much snug fast guy and the thermostat housing back installed all right so we got the housing uh, first off there is the thermostat housing gasket here we'll open up just get it installed like so get it in the corners see how much more that one sticks out we got this one here let's go ahead and pop this sucker off 
Boom, just like it. that. The housing, the pipe only goes in one way. All right, so I got them apart. I got this side of the housing cleaned out. And pop this O-ring over. Satisfying package rip. <laughs> now, when I put this back together, I like to just put a little bit of grease. Fits in one way, clean the surface, but there's a little lo locator tab welded onto the pipe and it fits in just like so go ahead and insert the pipe into the back of the water pump just like so longest bolt there's three bolts two of them are the same size one's long the longest one goes towards the bottom both the same size i always like to put threads in there put that one up Set that one up Threading in my coolant temperature sensor now. It doesn't have much threads on it, so I like to do these by hand. Got the housing back on, coolant temperature sensor back in, crossover pipe, got both new O-rings. Uh, new pump is on. Now that the pump is locked and secure, move the two set screws, remove this half moon timing contraption. Cover plate with the gasket to seal the oil off from getting out. All right, they just snug these up. They don't gotta be crazy tight. Just snug enough. And we can't tell exactly how tight them bolts is. There we go. Bam, just like that. All right, and that's how you do a water pump on a GM. I'll put the years in the description that all carry these water pumps. Like, comment, subscribe. There's gonna be a lot more content coming. We got a lot of crazy builds coming out of the shop. 